Welcome to our next section. I'm Dr. Sanjay Sanyal, Professor and Course Director of Anatomical Sciences, and the, the camera person is uh, uh, Jenny Glover and Sahai. Sahai. Okay, so we shall quickly demonstrate the muscles of the arm and the neuromuscular structures of the arm. So take a look at what's there in front of you. This structure that you see here, this is the biceps brachii. And you can see the two heads. This is the medial one, and this is the lateral head. This is taking origin from the coracobrachialis, uh, the, the coracoid process. And this is the long head, which is coming from the supraglenoid tubercle. The lateral one is the long head, the medial one is the short head. And both of them are uniting to form the belly of the biceps tendon. And if you trace the biceps tendon, you can see that the tendon goes inside the cubital fossa, which I'm going to show you just a little later. And the main tendon gets inserted onto the radial tuberosity, and it also gives an expansion, which I have cut. And this is part of the cut portion of the biceps, biceps expansion, which forms part of the roof of the cubital fossa. So this is the biceps aponeurosis. I think everybody can see it very clearly. So let's cut it and remove it. This is one end of the biceps aponeurosis, this is the other side of the biceps aponeurosis. So this is the biceps. The long head, the lateral one, and the short head, the medial one. If I reflect this, the muscle that we see under this, this is the brachialis. As you can see, it's taking origin from the lower part at your surface of the humerus. And it also gets inserted onto the ulna, and it forms part of the floor of the cubital fossa. The third muscle of the anterior compartment is this muscle that you see here. This is the coracobrachialis. And as we all know, it also takes origin from the coracoid process. And it gets inserted onto the medial surface of the humerus, corresponding to the insertion of the deltoid on the lateral surface of the humerus. The deltoid is inserted onto the radial deltoid tuberosity of the lateral surface, and the coracobrachialis is inserted onto the medial side. Now I would like to show you the neurovascular structures. Let's start with where we had left off yesterday. Let's show you the M of the brachial plexus because that will be our beginning or the starting point of all the neurovascular structures. So this is the M that you can see very clearly which I was telling you is a useful landmark. So all of you can see this is the lateral cord of the brachial plexus and the lateral cord is giving rise to the musculocutaneous nerve. It is giving rise to the lateral root of the median nerve. And this is the medial cord of the brachial plexus, which is giving rise to the medial root of the median nerve and the ulnar nerve. And the medial root and the lateral roots unite to form the median nerve. So, this is the musculocutaneous nerve. This is the median nerve. I have dissected it out. That's why it is standing up. In a normal person, this will not stand up like this. And this is the ulnar nerve. I will show you the radial nerve a little later. So let's trace the musculocutaneous nerve. As I told you in the class, the musculocutaneous nerve goes and disappears under the coracobrachialis. Can you see it's disappearing under the coracobrachialis? It is supplying the coracobrachialis. And I said that in some rare situations, the coracobrachialis can compress the ulnar nerve, uh, the musculocutaneous nerve, producing what is known as an entrapment neuropathy. Let's continue, but that's not very common. Then it, the musculocutaneous nerve in, continues and it travels traverses between the biceps and the brachialis and you can see it is supplying the biceps and it is supplying the brachialis. This is the musculocutaneous nerve. It has supplied the biceps here and it's supplying the brachialis and then in the lower part it pierces the cubital the fascia and it becomes cutaneous and that is why this is referred to as the musculocutaneous nerve and after that it supplies the skin on this side of the anterolateral side of the arm. So this is the musculocutaneous nerve and incidentally it accompanies the cephalic vein which you can when it becomes cutaneous it accompanies the cephalic vein. So this is what I mentioned. Okay that's about the musculocutaneous nerve. Now let's take the median nerve. The median nerve runs throughout the length of the arm and it is accompanied by this artery here which you can see very clearly. This is the brachial artery. It started from the subclavian, it became the axillary artery and at the lower border of the teres major it became the brachial artery. So now I know all of you are dying to see the profunda artery, isn't it? This is the profunda branch that you see here. 
And I told you the profunda branch runs with the radial nerve in the radial groove. So this is the radial nerve and this is the profunda branch. Both of them are disappearing behind the humerus. They will run obliquely behind in the radial groove of the humerus. Okay, so this is the profunda, the most important branch, and it's a very important collateral circulation for the brachial artery. Then the brachial artery also gives many other branches, but those are not visible here, and it continues into the cubital fossa. As you can see, we are tracing it down, accompanied by the median nerve, and it enters into the cubital fossa, and I'm going to show you the contents of the cubital fossa just now. Just bear with me. So that is about the median nerve. Now let's come to the ulnar nerve. The ulnar nerve is arising from the medial cord of the brachial plexus, and this is the ulnar nerve. And this ulnar nerve, as I told you, it pierces the medial intramuscular septum and it goes behind the medial epicondyle and it will run in behind the medial epicondyle, which is not palpable here. Incidentally, a little bit of the triceps muscle is visible here because that is the posterior compartment, but we are not seeing the posterior compartment here. This, as I told you yesterday in the video, this is the probe which has gone into the axillary vein and it is continuing as the, the brachial vein. So this is the brachial vein. And here you can see how the brachial vein is formed. The brachial vein was formed by this, I've cut it open because I had to show you the cubital fossa. So this is the cephalic vein. Cephalic vein continuing as a cephalic vein and it's giving a communication across the cubital fossa of the roof of the cubital fossa. This is called the median cubital vein. And this median cubital vein opens into the, the basilic vein and then it forms the brachial vein. And the brachial vein runs on the medial side of the brachial artery and this is the one which you see because it was very thin walled here that's why I had to put a probe to show you the continuity and I did tell you in the class that medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm and the medial cutaneous nerve of the arm which arise from the medial cord of the brachial plexus you can see a little bit of that is visible here this is the medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm and it accompanies the basilic vein you can see it accompanying the basilic vein here so these are the neurovascular structures I wanted to show you now the final part of it is the cubital fossa itself so in order to demonstrate the cubital fossa, first of all, as I told you, I have cut open the biceps aponeurosis and I reflected it because it was the roof and running on the roof was this median cubital vein which also I have cut and I have reflected. This was the cephalic vein which I also have cut and reflected. Let me show you the, the boundaries of the cubital fossa and the content, the most important content. So this is the medial epicondyle, this is the lateral epicondyle. Tomorrow we will see what arises from the medial and the lateral epicondyles. Right now, Imaginary line joining this to the superior boundary. This is the pronator teres. This is the inframedial boundary, and this is the brachioradialis. This is the infralateral boundary. So this is the cubital fossa. Let's see. Can we see the tendon of the biceps going into the cubital fossa? So this is one content of the cubital fossa. The most important, one of the most important contents. The next structure that we see in the cubital fossa is this artery here, which I told you is situated just medial to the tendon. Can you see it's medial to the tendon? So this is the, the brachial artery and all of you are dying to see its bifurcation, isn't it? There, your wish is fulfilled. Your wish is my command. So this is the radial division and this is the ulnar division. So at the lower end of the cubital fossa, the bicep brachial artery divides into a radial artery and ulnar artery. Incidentally, there was this, this cut portion that you see here. This is the radial recurrent artery which forms part of the radial um, uh, elbow anastomosis. Okay, so that is the next structure, the brachial artery. Then we come to the median nerve. This is the median nerve. So tendon, artery, nerve. The median nerve, as you will learn later on, enters the cubital fossa and it pierces through the supinator, the pronator teres muscle. Did I say supinator in the beginning? Well, correct me, this is the pronator teres muscle. The pronator teres muscle is the... So this median nerve, it pierces through the pronator teres muscle and you can see it is piercing through the pronator teres muscle. And it divides the muscle into a superficial and a deep part. It also supplies the pronator. And this is where it produces what is known as the pronator teres syndrome. So these are the contents of the biceps of the cubital fossa. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for watching. Have a nice day. If you have any questions or comments, put them in the comment section below. Thank you, camera persons.